What up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Rotten Russ with the uh, D100 build. Uh, you're watching Rotten Metal Garage. You already know the deal. But uh, this week I'm going to get some uh, new lights installed and uh, a little bit, of, a lot of wiring. I'm not going to try to undersell it a little bit of wiring. There's a lot of wiring. But uh, yeah, let's get into it. Roll. All right, so to pick up where I left off on the last video, here's the uh, battery out of my uh, Challenger. It has a dead cell. I kept having to recharge it, and then within a couple days it would die. So what I did here, you can tell, Put it on a trickle charger, let it charge a couple days. Um, like I said, I, I got a bunch of grounds that I need to uh, make sure are on. Um, I don't want to start the uh, motor, but uh, I do have some other things I'm gonna start doing. Battery's charging, but um, in the meantime, uh, I don't want to accidentally like try to crank the motor over. Um, I don't even have a fuel pump, any of that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the starter relay, set it to the side. Um, the starter fuse, I'm going to pull. And then I'm also going to pull this, which is your starter motor. So all three of those things are disconnected. That way, when I do plug the battery in, um, I only get power to like accessories so I can start checking some of the things I need to but that way if I accidentally turn the key too much I'm not gonna like bump start it and I still gotta uh, prime it I still have to put the header on which in the meantime I might actually just throw the um, original exhaust manifolds on there until I can figure out how to get the headers working so that's just a little update on that right now what I'm gonna work on is I have the Chrysler 300's um, trunk release latch so what I have here is the actual connector that powers it um, before I got this idea I had already cut it from the wire harness thinking I'm not going to use it but what I am going to do is I'm going to use this to replace the manual lever that you would use to release this and then you have this hole that that green hook would release so that's kind of like your secondary once you release this that hook connects to here so if it happens while you're driving your hood won't pop up it's just like a secondary catch I'm gonna keep that so that way when I release this one I still have to you know physically open the hood but uh, as far as this it's literally these two bolts here that hold the old uh, mechanism in place and uh, I'm gonna try to figure out how to get this on the hood to replace the old one if you can see that's a uh, way bigger than this little latch but um, yeah let's get this off and see if I can get this at least mocked up for now Trying to figure out where it's actually going to sit. Um, I got plenty of play up and down. Um, so, as you can tell, this lever here is actually on the side. Cool thing about this is you slide this tab forward, it comes off of that one, and this is kind of the secondary I guess I don't know 
maybe for different vehicles that have it but uh this one actually lines up with the bottom so when it's sitting here i can put the cable to where i can pull it down so um right off the bat you can see how this is at an angle um and i need it flat like this side so all i did was i clamped this in my vise tightened it down until it flattened out pretty much where i'm at with this i just have it uh tacked in a place where i think it should go um i can't actually set where it needs to go quite yet just because i need to wait until i'm ready to mount the hood set my gaps and all that but uh for now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna hook up the release mechanism there's the wire um just connects right here ground I'll run this wire along the core through the firewall and back into the wire harness that's no big deal but uh, let me show you why I went with the trunk and not with the front one. The reason why I wanted to use the trunk is because I still have the original button for the trunk release. And then in the uh, 300, it was like a physical cable. So yeah, that's why. There it is. So what I did was I just looped it around using a, it's a, like a bicycle nut that you would use for the brakes. It's got a hole right underneath the head. Just clamped it and ran this side around the bolt. Tightened it down between two washers. So now I have a uh, finger loop. Uh, I'm gonna hook it up and then show you. So obviously that would be with the hood down. Got this little loop that would be underneath. Pull it. Yeah. I think that's gonna work. Alright, so um when I actually figure out where this is gonna go, I will ground it off to that bolt. As far as the wire, I uh, ran it along here, clamped it there, ran it through that hole, and uh, yeah, it's good to go. Uh, run this along the existing wire harness, and so this will run along there, and I will solder that back on inside. But that will pretty much sum up tonight. And then uh, we'll come back to this tomorrow. But again, in uh, YouTube land time, it'll be this quick. Like, Approximately right 10 hours later. All right, so I just made a trip to the pull-apart. It got expensive quick. But, uh... Show me what I got. You're looking at 80 bucks right here, son. God dang. But it's all the harnesses that I need. So uh let's load up the car. Back at the uh, home base. Kind of go over some of the stuff that I got. Um, this is the complete rear tail light. Um, that's the main harness. These two are the wires that actually wire to the back of the uh tail light housing then I have the blinker 
and running light um, connectors for the front as well as the fog light. Pretty good radiator cap that runoff hose. Got a radiator hose and I got the heated seat switches. A couple of these relays which are ridiculously hard to find. As I got this, so here's the uh, part number for the one I got. This is for like a Toyota or something, but uh, yeah, it's a little bit bigger than I was expecting, but it is a six ribbed pulley. And um, the reason why I went with this one is because a lot of them were plastic. This one is metal. So, pulley for the belt. See if I can't finish that. Look at that. Sometimes you get a little lucky. That is going to work perfectly. Um, so, this was the plug that I was going to run for those lights. Um, what I got was the fog light extension. So, what I did was I was able to actually just keep the side runner markers. They fit in that housing. I'll probably just end up uh, sealing them in the harness. Here's where the um, fog light harness connects. So, what I did was I went ahead and ran it along that other harness that went over there. As you can see, that side's good. And then what I decided is these are actually going to be my fog lights. Um, so when I hit my fog, these will turn on. So that means that leaves me with two more headlights. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is because I switched this out for the fog lights, that freed this back up. Because now I have an extra light, what I think I'm going to do is use these motorcycle lights and put them behind the grill right here on each side. What I did was I uh, went ahead and cut this from the harness. Um, this is the old light bulb that was in it kind of just similar to when I did these I'll uh, drill out the back or glue that in so this one I mean it's an alright bulb but I want to keep it OEM so if this bulb burns out I just buy a new one for a 300 um, that way I know I won't have any problems. So as you can see, it fits right in there. Still have a little bit of space to go in a little more, but I think that'd be pretty badass. Put the grill back on. Um, this, give or take, this little indent here will be where this is. So obviously I don't want the light behind there. So to be within this area here, and that lines up perfectly with this. So literally, it'll be here, and then I'll line it up with the center of this light. So it's gonna be about there. It's got a hollow bolt. I'll just run the lines through there, and uh, this doesn't move, so I'll have to weld like an L bracket that I can bolt it onto. All right, there they are, disassembled, um, wired. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a couple pieces of scrap metal to make a mount for them. There we have the brackets made, mounted. Now uh, we'll put the grill on and see how it looks before I weld it up. Uh, right now I just have it tacked in. There's the brackets. But uh, yeah, let's put the grill on.
like yeah badass it's a new day got some uh, fog lights and headlights I'm actually gonna cut these and I'm going to put in these connectors uh, these are H11 so I bought H11 headlights the only thing I need to do is get a pair of seven inch headlights and for the most part front headlight wiring all should be done all right so what I used was uh, this is 24 gauge wire um, what I did was I uh, burnt some holes through here, wrapped it a couple times, burn it to the sides, pull it through. That way it'll hold it right where I want it. Did it to both. So I'm gonna tighten these up a little bit, pop them in, wire them up, and then those will be done. There it is. Lights are in, ready to go. I think that looks pretty wicked. Um, I'm still going to weld the uh, bottom brackets up. But in the meantime, I'm moving on to this. First things first, I found this bolt. It is perfect for what I need it for. So this is the spacer that came with it. I put a piece of rubber in there. Just to kind of, when I tighten it down, it should hopefully bite this bolt a little better. So, that's that. That's the top. Now, and this is the reason why I save everything. So, I'll put this on. This on top of it. This to sandwich it. This then this and hopefully that gives me the space I need. There it is. It's on there. Now I'll put all these back in my spacer drawer. Um there you can see the secondary headlights, I guess, if you will, are installed. So now the wire has been extended and that pulley and brand new belt was installed. So now what I'm gonna do is some of the wiring along the passenger side. So uh, let's head over there and show you what we got going. So this is where I'm at. The power is run through. Um, the wire harness is cut and mounted. Um, I have it running under the carpet. The harness is above. Power is down here in the channel. Um, and everything else is ran through the back of the cab uh, main harness is to the fuse box so I'm gonna mount the fuse box right where it sits then it leads to the rear module um, which leaves the rear brake harness um, Using that other harness I got from the junkyard, I cut it, spliced it, and made it long. Er, um, probably still gonna have to make it a little bit longer. 
And that pretty much summed up my night last night. It was just wiring, soldering, and mounting. Now I have the power to the battery. Ran through here and I'll go into the back of the bed. And as of right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start trying to figure out how to wire up these to the truck tail lights. These are the original metal housings. And I got brand new lenses for them too, so that'll look sweet. But uh, let's figure out how we're going to do this. So I got all the uh, sockets out there. Uh, I just had to pry out the edges. They're like pressed fitted in. Um, so yeah, just pried them up with a screwdriver. They popped right out. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out how I'm going to get these to twist so in. The gray one in the 300 is the clear lens so that will be your reverse so that one for the most part is good what i didn't take into account is the um mounting hole right here so i'll have to figure something out with that but for now i have the red marked where those two tabs will go. I'm just going to grind the red away and see if I can actually just pop it, twist it like it's supposed to. That's the theory, but uh, let's keep it going. Let's go. That is going to work. So as you can see, I twist it. It's hard to do it in film at the same time, but there it is. Now it's locked in and it's flush we're good to go now here comes the hard part because this thing is super thick and uh, I was trying to use the step up bit but it ain't gonna work so what I've been doing is using a uh, marring tip or whatever you want to call it man this middle one sucks but um as you can see, ready to be plugged in. All of them are in. Um, I might have to shave this plastic a little bit, but that's no problem. The only part that sucks is I got to do it again. It took about an hour. So, but that'd be cool. That'll work. interesting this one doesn't have that uh, hole for that one no big deal we'll drill her out put her in Bam. there they are finished up so I'm gonna wait to actually put them in the truck until I run the wires and everything but uh and I also need light bulbs no big deal um, actually, I think I have some, but, uh, yeah, looks good. Now I'm going to start trying to figure out how I'm going to run the rest of the wires through the truck into the back. All right. And as you can tell, most of that wiring is gone. So what I did was I decided to mount the, uh, module up top. I, uh. Drilled a hole, fed everything through. This stuff I'm gonna run underneath the cab, so I just let it fall to the floor. Um, this one right here, I extended way out because this is gonna go to the back upper brake light. I think I'm gonna put it upside down on the top of the camper. But now that I have most of that stuff ran through, I'm going to jump in the bed and uh, 
I'm gonna at least try to get um, the power situated and uh, yeah we'll go from there let's uh, hop back there and see what I could do alright so here I am in the back um, there was already a gigantic hole here's the wires you can see it's connected through the cab um, what I'm gonna do is I have way more cable than I need is I'm gonna cut these both to about right here that'll be plenty of wire and then I'm going to attach both of them to this so the cool thing about this um, connector that I have they have these brass inserts and uh, all I did was cut it, stick the wire through there, and uh, I will clamp it down, and that'll be solid. And then I'll do the same with this one. And just like that, power is ready to go. Um, next, I'm probably going to affix this to the wall of the bed. And probably run that uh, wire for the stoplight that I want to put up here so uh, yeah so don't mind the mess I still gotta clean this bitch up but uh there I have the power ran through I just have it up and out of the way um, I finally ran the cable for the brake so, uh, all I did was I just cut the, uh, I don't know, the flare that was on it or whatever you want to call it. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind it to where it's flush with the light. And then, uh, I'm actually going to mount it to the back and then you'll see what I'm going to do next. But, uh, yeah, progress. And there we go. It's flush with the light. And now I can put it up in the front. Alright, so there it is, centered, um, tacked in. So, what I'm going to do is I'll run some uh, silicone through those bolts. And then uh, I'll actually bolt it in. But it's just tacked for now. And then. Um, I scored around where it sits, so I'm gonna cut the back side out. All right, so what I did was I used um, bolts that had uh, loose washers, but they're the captured washers, so I could still screw them in and out. Um, I went ahead and drilled all the way through and that's what you'll see when that light turns on but uh that's it guys i think that's gonna do it for this video it's gonna be a long one and uh gets kind of boring at the end there because of all the wiring so uh yeah remember guys hit that like button subscribe and don't forget to comment and uh, next video we'll be finishing that light up and uh, yeah we got a lot of stuff done still a lot more stuff to do so I'll see you guys next time peace